Hello and welcome to Crafts. In today's programme we'll be looking back to the working terrier and hound groups to see more of the best of breed winners. And we'll also be taking our first look at the action event. The speed and precision of agility, the control and discipline of obedience, and we start the furious fun of flyball. This is always a great crowd pleaser, massive crowd in the main arena when the pack from the Midlands here takes on also a Midland team, the Rugby Reds. The rules of fly ball extremely simple. Two teams, four dogs in each team. They have to clear eight hurdles each dog and collect a ball. That's all it is, very simple. This is actually old-fashioned fly ball insofar as the box throws the ball into the air and the dogs have to catch it. There are faster boxes which allow the dogs just to retrieve a ball very simply and that's built for speed. But this is for pure excitement and competition. At the moment, in this first run, the Rugby Reds have beaten the pack and take a 1-0 lead in the best of three competition. Let's see how this pans out. First dog for the pack. They've got everything to do. They've got to win this one or they're out. And that's a very neat catch. Perfect example. Does look as though the Rugby Red dogs are a little bit quicker and in fact the pack have missed one so rugby reds the advantage lies with them their third dog going now comfortably in the lead but i suspect there may have been a fault in a change over there and the final pick up he's got the ball there's something not right about this rugby team they think they've won but they haven't they haven't they've got to go again they've still got another dog to go and i think that's going to have given it back to the pack they should have won they were fast enough but they're going to have to go again i think it was a changeover problem one dog uh, overlapped with another. Sad for them, but that makes it 1-1. It's all going to be on the final heat. Look at that. Poetry in motion. Final run, the pack setting off. Rugby Reds matching them stride for stride. Very close. And so too was that changeover. My word, Rugby Reds almost making the same mistake that they did in the previous run. It really is extremely tight, this competition. And a mistake there by the Reds, that could cost them. You can see the positions of the dogs relative to each other on the course. It's almost neck and neck. Rugby just ahead, but it's a mistake by Rugby. And it looks as though the pack are going to win it by default. They do. They win the whole thing 2-1 to one and go through to the final. Rugby Reds should have had it, but it's the pack that go through. Second semi-final, it's almost been an all-Midlands affair, but Watford Bounce has taken out of the Midlands. Belisha Beacon are another local team from Streetly. Belisha Beacon in the red, nearest the camera. And it looks to me straight off as though Belisha Beacon are very accurate, but perhaps Watford Bouncers are quicker. The dog's running fast. Yes, they are. That's a very bouncy dog there for Belisha Beacon. But they're taking the lead because they're being terribly accurate. It's a good run. That's it, all four there. They take it by about five yards. Belisha Beacon win the first of the three. Watford bounces then in the lilac. They've got it all to do. It's close again. This is such a good competition. Very popular, growing in popularity all the time. And it is absolutely neck and neck. Oh, but a mistake there for the Watford bouncers. That could cost them. If this dog goes clear, Belisha Beacon go through to the final, and they will. Beautiful run out. That's classic. And that means that the Watford bouncers go out. Belisha Beacon meet the pack in the final. We'll show you the final of the fly ball tomorrow, but first let's turn our attention back to the glamour of the show ring and take a look at some more of the dogs that were best to breed in the largest of the groups. That's the working dogs. <laughs> As the group will be split into two next year, this is the last time it'll be so large. The representatives of 43 different breeds coming under the eye of Lionel Hamilton Rennick, the group judge. The first dog we're going to take a look at is an imported Australian cattle dog, Digger. He's six years old. He's owned in partnership by Lynn Chesterfield, who's showing him, and the Earl and Countess of Huntingdon. His full name is Christad Eureka Digger, and this was his first best of breed.
And you could describe this canine cobra very shortly as compact, powerful and muscular. For me, they always look as if they had a wry, earthy sense of humour in the same strain as their countrymen. He's got a strong head, solid body, and the legs to propel that deep chest and broad back. He's a real working type, isn't he? He is, and, and he looks as though he's bred for a real function, doesn't he? Indeed. This Estrella mountain dog was rescued from a destruction order, believe it or not, by owner Lynette Godridge of Chandler's Ford. Clara Foro Barocca of SNL, or Braga, as he's known, is six years old. He's two reserve best in shows to his name, in spite of being, in the let's word, very nervous. He's a very handsome character, isn't he? He looks as if he could cope with his job specification as a hardy guard dog with built-in stamina and a goodly coat to keep out the cold, as it blows a bit in the mountains where he hails from. Sure a steady does. mover, never ever in a great hurry. No, he's not today, is he? <laughs> Last year, Paddy, the Hovervart, became the youngest ever best of breed winner here and repeats his success this year. He's still only two years old and Holmes and Poseidon will have delighted his owners, Caroline and Bob Richardson, who brought him here from Sleaford in Lincolnshire. He's another of the guarding types, but this time from the farms of Germany, where he's been plying his trade for centuries. This blonde colour, as it's known in the breed, makes him look somewhat like a golden retriever, but he's nowhere near as broad, especially in the head area, and they're seen more often in black and gold. That's still a hovelart. Hmm, yes, I would have gone golden retriever, but then I haven't got your expert eye, Mike. Well, there you are can't be perfect. The Norwegian Buhund is Nighthall Edith. She's only 23 months old and is owned by Jacqueline and Michael Cobb from Aldermaston. Edith has been reserved best puppy at the National Working Breeds Open Show. And I think it could well be the first black Buhund we've ever seen in the main ring, isn't it, Mike? I think you're dead right. He's a very natty spitz, this bitch, but Crufts regulars will remember a cracker from the same breed about four years ago. That was the more commonly seen Wheaton colour. While obviously, as you say, this is a black. It's one of my favourite breeds with a bold outlook on life and an absolutely delightful temperament. Thoroughly active way of going, as he's showing there. Nice. Another cracker. Well, they all are, aren't they? By the time they've reached this stage, they've got to be good. Another unusual breed here, the Polish Lowland Sheepdog. Diane Mottram's My Beard's Dynamite is two years old, known as Domino, with one challenge certificate to his name. And you know, in 15 years of exhibiting, Diane has produced the first and the only Polish Lowland champion. It's a most attractive expression on the dog, with a penetrating but kindly gaze. They were judged today by Ken Bullock, who's got a very definite eye for a good one in the breed. Interestingly, I'm told they're, most of them are born without tails. The standards suggest that they are inclined to apple, but this chap doesn't seem to hang about at all, does he? Oh, he's nice. 97, now don't laugh, that's the pet name of this cardigan corgi, winning his 31st CC today, and he's the top winning blue merle in the history of the breed. Champion Willow Glen's Silver Cavalier is now six and a half and wins owner Sandra Tonkin, her first Cruft CC in over 30 years of showing. That's quite a thought, isn't it? The blue merle coloration sports that unusual pale blue eye. Nowhere near as popular as his cousin, which hails from Pembrokeshire, but said to be the older historically. He's lovely, lovely deep chest on him. And this is the Pembroke version. Three-year-old bitch, champion Belroyd Early Rose, Polly in fact, was hand-reared after her mother died during caesarean section by her owners, Alan Taylor and Idris Jones from Aberdare, where they've been exhibiting and breeding top-class dogs for over 40 years. Every bit as sturdy as the cardigan and could give the impression that she's ever so slightly shorter in back but the aficionados will tell you that's just an optical illusion. One thing that is certain, the breed doesn't normally keep their tails. Both are extremely courageous. They'll nip in low to persuade their bovine charges to get a shift on. As many royal footmen would no doubt endorse. Indeed. But Lionel Hammonds and Rennick chose a young and splendid Bouvier de Flandre for his best of group. 18-month-old Zena, the pride and joy of owner-handler Carrie Wilberg and co-owner Fiona Lambert. Champion Canix Zena went on to fight for best in show. Ross, the three-year-old Doberman, took the group reserve for Clive and Nancy Evans of Tewkesbury. 
And 17-month-old Jake the Giant Schnauzer took Group 3 for Keith and June Mags from Chorley. And Turbo charges into Group 4, the 17-month-old Hungarian Pooley, who owner Avril Lacey and Stan Sisovic say is a real pickpocket. But the Bouvier carries the flag for the group. I have an orange, which I do every day. I have two thirds, and she has one third. Chicken. They just have, that's just chicken. Same as chicken. The dog that we have here today, Oxford, he loves ice cream. He will, he will steal ice cream and cream if he can. Yes. She likes the orange and she will pinch it. If you're not careful, and she actually pinches the whole oranges out of the actual fruit bowl. He eats anything that we eat, basically, and particularly likes curry. The local takeaway does a good trade, and <laughs> some pig's ears are another favourite. Now back to the action with the team agility competition. Well, the first of the four teams that we're going to see that made it through to this final. Burridge Dog Training Club, Lin Young with Myatt, working sheep dog. Jump. This Jump. dog's ten years old, Jump. incidentally. Here, Myatt, through. And the handler Myatt, been competing Myatt, Myatt. since Jump. 1980. Table. It's a very straightforward Down. course. Four. The table, Three. as usual, where Three. the dogs must Down. hold for a One. count of five. Go. You can hear the judge's voice. That's Neville Watson. He's moving around the ring. He checks on these places. The red pointers, you see, Jump. those are contact come points through. where the dogs must make contact. Myatt, come. 49 seconds, the time for this course. More contact points on the seesaw. Jump. As Myatt Jump. works very well for Lynn Young. She's Myatt. a biomedical scientist from Southampton. That's Lynn, of course, not the dog. Down. Go on. Good control Go on. and excellent time. Well within the time limit of 49 seconds. 46.19, a clear round. Perfectly touching the contact points there before jumping off. Excellent control. Derbyshire Dog Agility Club, they also made it here to the final. We're looking at Kim Hunt from Belfer in Derbyshire with Jess, another working sheepdog who is three years old. Register the name of the dog, Jess in time. What a good pun. First time at Crofts for these two. But Kim, very experienced. Oh, that's a mistake. Neville Watson extends the count. Can't afford that. This is a timed course, remember, 49 seconds. <coughs> Jess likes all these obstacles, apparently. Treats the whole thing as a game. Most of these agility dogs do. Very straightforward course. All the usual obstacles that you'd expect. Oh, very close, but I think made that contact point OK. And another good time, yes, just inside the time limit, 48.4, but five faults. And it was precisely that point coming off the A-frame. Next to go, Wellow and District Dog Training Club, Mrs Chris Overton with Teaser, another Border Collie, almost three years old. Sundak Teaser. The dog's name, really. Go on up. Come, 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 come. Double. Oh, and Double. a very vocal Good handler. Come. But it doesn't matter how you handle him if the dog does what you want. Come. That's the Down. thing. Down. This table Down. hold Three. is actually to Down. show Down. control over the dog. So Down. the dog just doesn't go pell-mell around Down. the course forever. It is controlled all the time. And this is good. Come, Tease. Tease, come. Double. Go on up. Come on. This dog actually belongs to uh, another Down. member of the team, K Fairs. Good girl, go on two. Come, come, come. Come, come. come. Chris Overton well was the reserve in the team. Well oh, and there well might well be well a fault well there, well jumping well on, on a little high. These contact points have to be made. It's a good time, it's fast. 46.64, very good time, and it's gone clear. Well, it was close, but the judge didn't spot anything wrong, and that's another good round. Bretford Dog Training Society, Jane Baldwin, who's a carpet retailer, her husband's in the team as well, used to run for rugby, but uh, they moved to Bretford, which is near Coventry. The dog's called Tarby, or the Collie, nearly five years old. Believe it or not, this is Jane's 11th appearance here at Crofts in the uh, team finals. This team won here last year. Terrific control. It's, it's an object lesson in how to do it, really. Talk to the dog Back. when it's necessary. Tunnel. Tarby, come over. Well, you're hearing Back. perfectly clearly how she's doing. Steady now. Stay. Pulling the dog back. So doesn't jump off Back. too soon off that seesaw. Back. Look on. Stay. 
It's obviously going to be seen in uh, Rolf's Amazing Animals, a new series which is going to be seen in May, but we're seeing it first here, 45.13, a perfect round. Just look at this control here, just slowing the dog down, keeping it calm and then urging it on. Go now, yes. And here you can see the situation after the first round. Time is secondary to the faults. The faults are the important thing, time is the second consideration. Brentford lead, Burridge Dog Training Club second, Wellow and District Dog Training Club fourth, and Derbyshire, with its five faults, are fourth. So they'll go first in this next round. David Howard, who's a financial advisor from Derby, with Gabby, a working sheep dog, two years old. Gabby's actually called, cheekily, something for the weekend. Gabby's first visit to Crofts, and a mistake there, as you saw, but uh, I think probably just the time penalty. We'll wait and see what uh, Judge Neville Watson makes of that. He could penalise it for a refusal, but probably not. Wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back. Go through. Gap, gap. Gap. Wall. Wait, Good wait, round, wait. apart from that stumble Back. by the table. Back. Clear up. now. Down. Gabby's only been uh, competing for 12 months, but uh, my word, that's a good time. Look at it, 42.52 by the lot of faults. Certainly the table was one, and there's another, knocking a bar off, 15 faults in all. Wello go next, Bev Dale with Spiv. Border Collie, of course. Sundark Spiv, Spiv's very young and inexperienced. He's been competing for just five and a half months. Down. Bevdale Three. is a Down. finance Two. company clerk, Down. comes One. from Bournemouth. Go. Spiv Down. is just, just Back. two Back. years Back. old. Back. Very Back. keen Back. little dog. Bev's worry is that Wait. she will let him down. Oh, he slipped off there. Now that could be a problem. I think he made contact, but it could Back. still be penalised. We'll wait and see. Wait. Wait. Good control by Go Bevdale. As they come into the finish, yes, another good time, 43.7, no faults, and in fact, you do see quite clearly here, makes contact and falls off, no penalty, no penalty. Next to go, Burridge Dog Training Club, Dave Collis, who's a haematologist from Southampton, with Seki, working sheepdog, six years old, one of the more experienced pairings in this competition. Seki, calm, calm, calm. They've been working together for about three years. Three. Wait, two, wait, one, wait, go, wait. Lovely coordination between Neville and David there on the count. Sounds like they rehearsed it. Now this is a nice run. Looking very good. These obstacles, you know, they do come up and surprise the dogs sometimes. It's a very well-designed course. Oh, and he's taken off far too soon. Knocked the bar there. Definitely five faults. Unfortunate. Nice dog. 47.54, but there are five faults, giving them a cumulative time. 133.73 for the team, and oh, yes, you saw that jumping far too early. Bretford Dog Training Society, then. The next to go, Lindsay Curry. Lives in rugby. The dog is called Fudge, a working sheepdog. Seven years old here. Fife and Fudge, the full name. Go! Lay down! Oui. Very fast to the table, that's good. One, go. Lovely looking wait, dog, wait, liver wait. and white. Which Looks like one of Mary Ray's back, dogs, and it wouldn't surprise me. One. She comes from rugby as well. One, wait. This looks good. One, wait. If they carry on like this. They're going to win. They're going to be in the lead at the end of the second round. Yes, 44.29, and it's clear. It did jump just a little bit high there on the A-frame, but it's OK. And so after two rounds, Bretford Dog Training Society just hold the lead over Wellow and District Dog Training Club. They're both faultless. Bretford have it on time. Burridge Dog Training Club have five faults. Derbyshire, the newcomers on the block, have 15. And we'll bring you the final two rounds of the agility competition tomorrow. But now it's time for the results of our competition. Last week, we asked you which group did last year's Best in Show come from? The answer, of course, was B, the toy group. So well done, the winner, Mrs. Pat Lord from Brent Knoll in Somerset.
So congratulations and we look forward to seeing you here at Crofts next year. But now it's time to see some more of the best of breeds and this time it's from the Terrier Group. <laughs> The judge for the Terrier group at this year's Crafts was Peter Winfield, and here are some of the best of breeds that didn't make it to his final six. First up, the Australian Terrier champion Dinky Dye Southern Cross was bred in America by Linda Webb and imported to the UK by Sheila Stoddart and Marsha Gray. Sam is a two and a half year old bitch who's apparently partial to jewellery. She once ate one of Sheila's diamond earrings, which was eventually recovered. Apparently, Sheila's wearing them in the ring right now. And mine boggles which orifice it came out before she put them in her ears. <laughs> it's a breed with a typically keen expression with those wide set eyes. It's a friendly, sturdy breed which gives the impression that while it'll play merry heck with any rat which crosses its path, it would happily settle down the family half. Well muscled bitch, this with powerful thighs on a very small frame. A good one. On to the Border Terrier, Luther or champion Orenberg Night Freight is only Jane Gillam's second show dog and he was actually last in the Terrier group at Crufts in 1994. He's now eight and a half years old and still going strong by the look of him, Mike. That's a face to smile back at, isn't it? Said to be shaped like an otter in its head, keen expression, neat ears, deep chest, apparently to enable the owner to get down a narrow berth. The judge should be able to span the chest with both hands just behind the shoulder and all the standard asks is that the dog has the soundness to follow a horse they're very careful about the number of words they use these people they have a, a lovely little phrase but at one point it's racy and that's all they say about it real natural looking terrier i think they're gorgeous dogs they are very popular John and Mandy Young's miniature bull terrier, Beryl. Badlesmere Burnt Fingers at Bullyview is a 17-month-old baby bred by Jay Shaw. She has two CCs now and managed to hold her own at home with three standard bull terriers. So the miniature, well, not in temperament. No, and then they may resemble the full-size bully, except that she's not allowed to exceed 14 inches in height. She's got precisely the same Roman nose and jaunty air about her and gives exactly the right impression of substance in a smaller compass. And that is a lovely mix of marking. I think that's a gorgeous dog. I wouldn't mind having one myself. They're very businesslike, aren't they? They look like they've got purpose in their lives, something to go and do. Hmm, you could be right at that. <laughs> Last year, the Ken Terrier champion Kin Kim Ludwig won the group, whilst this year his kennel mate champion Kin Kim Rufton Bruffle took his place. Ron and Brenda Birch must be absolutely delighted. Rufton is a walking puppy crash at home, apparently, and he's a great digger. It's another cracking young dog from that kennel. And it really did hit the tops last year. A game, active breed who look always fully ready for action whenever it's required. That double coat is harsh, weather resistant, and a fair old job to groom into the right shape for competition. But, you know, that is quite an effort for a kennel to get two best of breeds with different dogs in successive years. They must be pleased. Indeed, a great deal of experience and a breeding program to be proud of, I should think. Now, Freddy, or Inzivar Gold Standard, is a two-year-old dandy Dinmont Terrier, owned and bred by Francis Chapman King. Freddy's had a terrible year because uh, he had to have two operations on his tum, and for a while it looked touch and go as to whether he'd survive at all. So you can imagine Francis's pleasure when he pulled through and he's made the group at Crufts. Well, she's done very well, but fancy calling an aristocrat like that Freddy. <laughs> it's a breed which doesn't get as much publicity as some of the other terriers but this really is a lovely specimen with a well-balanced body and a super top line it's called mustard in color and this is really near the top end of the range towards sort of reddish brown it's got real thrust in those hindquarters nice and now, how could anybody resist this chap? The Sky Terrier, champion Glorfindel First Foot, or Popeye to his owner breeder, Gail Marshall. He's a bit of a softie at home and takes the Lord's spot on the sofa, I should think so too. They just look such characters, Mike. Yes, it's another Terrier from Scotland, but this chap's even longer in body than the Dandy Dinmont. A difficult breed to find the correct balance between those very well-feathered ears and the long, low style of body. 
an extraordinary contrast when you think about it of the ideal height being 10 inches at the shoulder and a possible length from nose to tail tip of over 40 inches who'd fancy keeping that coat in order in all weathers it's really quite a task yeah there's one that i see regularly on my dog walks and my goodness the muddy takes home now this was the final six and the winner of the group for Crufts 1998 champion, Saradon Forever Young, the Welsh Terrier, a two-year-old owned by Judith Averis and David Scorthorne, bred by David. And into the group two spot, Vox champion Balboa Belmondo, the Kerry Blue, for owners Senior Tasselli and Leslie Herbert. In the third spot, the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier, Coogs champion and Irish champion, Stevelin Blue Suede Shoes, owned by Sandy Tanner. And Group 4, this year champion Rafos Fire Machine, Kevin, a gorgeous Lakeland Terrier owned by the Greenaways. So that was the Terrier Group for Crufts 98. And the winner, the Welsh. On to obedience now, and the dog competition was held on Thursday. These are the tests. Firstly, the retrieve. The article this year was a small furry hedgehog. Very tempting. Secondly, the judge will be looking for some accurate heel work. Then there's the send away, sending the dog away from the handler and hopefully dropping it in a designated spot. Distant control, a sequence of commands that must be obeyed accurately at a distance. The stays, a two minute sit stay, followed by a 10 minute down stay, a test of the dog's confidence and also its patience. Then, finally, the scent test. Always dreaded, the dog must avoid the decoys and find the judge's cloth. So, what will give a team the edge? Sandy Wadhams. I think it's going to be those handlers that can keep it together on the day, the yeah. experienced ones. Doc Watts with our young dog, Reme, Jean Duncan with Ross, and Dee Stebman with Tolly. The first exercise we're going to take a look at is the retrieve. This pair is Gail Waddington with obedience champion Jack of Clubs. Find your dog. A very accurate and steady retrieve, and they only lost three quarters of a point. Take it. Finish. Yeah. Lovely. Joe M. Jai Cathlon and Pauline Haig, a fast dog, but he runs on a bit. He lost three points here. Zigdan Zing also lost three points for Dot Watts, Take but he's it. only a youngster. Finish. Full Catch of enthusiasm, it. though. Faster and a little more accurate, Jean Duncan and obedience champion Brimo Magic Jason only lost one and a half points. And in the case of Stella Henstridge's obedience champion Dodwell Callum, enthusiasm and accuracy lost him only one and a quarter points. Well, there was a bit of a skid there, I suppose. Take it. Finish. On to the heel work exercise now. Dee Stedman and obedience champion Jolly Tolly Tank really impressed Sandy Thank Wadhams the with their teamwork. But for this year's judge, Linda White, Tolly was adopting a slightly incorrect heel position, perhaps a little too far back. They lost 11 and a quarter points in total. Out to me. Neil Short's golden About retriever, turn. Mr Midas. Well, perhaps he was a little hesitant on that down. About turn. But you've got to remember, in this case, it's their first Quite attempt at Crufts, and the pressures are so different from anywhere else. This lovely steady heel work is from obedience champion especially Russ, Stephanie Woolham's working sheepdog, getting the best mark for the day, with only four and a quarter Out points lost. And this is Joe M. Jai Cathlon again. In this case, just what Linda White was looking for, working in a lovely uninhibited fashion. Only four and three quarter points lost Out in to total. Me. Halt. I think that's delightful. Normal pace. Second position. Here's Dot Watts coming. with Zach, winner of the last two years at Crufts, but Back that should turn. have been a stand. Dot's mistake and a costly one. Finally, let's Third take a look at Barbara coming. Weidart's working sheepdog, Warstock Wise Finn. It's their first time here at Crafts, right, also a real thrill for a pair who won their qualifying ticket under Jim White, Judge Linda White's right, husband. Know. They lost just five and a quarter points here. Lovely heel work. Halt. Now, the send away test caused a few problems this year. This is Pauline Haig with Joe M. Jai Cathlon, who'll show us how it's done. 
away between those collies and then drops instantly on command. But a lot of dogs found the collies rather intimidating and also the back marker, that's, that's the that. sheep, too tempting Call with disastrous dog. results. A nice recall and pick up and a really happy that's dog working that. with enthusiasm throughout. The pair only lost two and a half points in total. Real concentration on both faces. Halt. Now this is Dot Watts' young hopeful, Zigdan Zing. And just look at that lack of concentration. There are so many distractions here at Crufts. But Dot's an experienced handler, so she's going to take time to set him up again. Send you down. This is Carol Patrick's obedience champion, Jewis Spielen. Unfortunately, completely confused about where he's supposed to go. He lost 23 points. Anita Neal's Chalkwell Chesi ended up in the wrong place too. And not such a brilliant pickup from Gale and obedience champion Jack of Clubs either. Distant control. The first one up, obedience champion Penance Jamie with Penny Whitwer at the helm. A perfect example of this exercise. Instant obedience, fast reactions and no creeping from position, losing precisely no points. Now, obedience champion, especially Russ, lost six points for this missed first position. Warstock Wise Finn executing an excellent static move from the stand to the down. Not many dogs can do that. But unfortunately, this golden retriever, Patrick Holden's obedience champion, Melnola Bramble, will he miss several positions. Not a brilliant test, but his owner loves him anyway. Now the stays, a real test at Crufts with so many extraneous distractions. Firstly, the two-minute sit stay. Mighty relief from those owners as they return. Now some dogs do get a bit overexcited. <laughs> They'll need careful control to avoid losing their cool. Pauline Haig soothes Joe M. Jicuthlon into the down along with some friends. And ten minutes later, it'll all be over. So, with only the scent to go, there were several dogs in contention, all working sheepdogs, incidentally, with Pauline Haig and Joe M. Jacathlon just in the lead. So, it's the judge's scent cloth the dog wants, avoiding the decoys, and here's Warstock Wise Finn. He's in fourth position at the moment, and remember, it's their first time at Crufts, so there'll be a lot of pressure on Barbara. Happy dog, though. And a lovely, positive test. They actually lost only one and a half points. This is obedience champion Brimo Magic Jason, who unfortunately despite a lot of work here, fails the test, losing 50 points. That knocks him out. Obedience champion Penance Jamie completed a lovely scent. He ended up with 17 and a quarter points total, tying with Warstock Wise Finn. Dot Watts youngster Zig Dan Zing was lying in equal second place before he went a bit mad over the scent. He had a super time, but he only lost two and three quarter points, ending up on a total of 13 and three quarter points. Now, the only dog who can challenge the current leader, this is obedience champion Brimo Magic Jason. But he fails the test. So, can the leader, Joe M. Jicathlon, do a good scent test? He needs it to win. Pauline Haig must be so nervous. Look at the tension. But he does it. So, a wonderful ending to the competition. And the 1998 Crufts dog winner, Pauline Haig with Joe M. Jicathlon. Dot Watts youngster in second and tying for third, Penny Whitwer with Pennant Jamie and Barbara Wideart with Warstock Wise Finn. If anyone should ever doubt the enjoyment the dogs get from obedience, take a look at this.
Well, well done, Mary. What did you think about that, then? A brilliant demonstration there of dog and handler having fun together. Here's Jessica and Mike with some more of the breed winners from the Hound Group. The Hounds were the second group to be judged on Friday this year and the judge, Zena Thorne Andrews. Here are some of the breeds that didn't make her final cut. These are such sleek, neat little hounds, almost cat-like. The Basenji, Embo Sequin at Rubble Roy, a two-year-old bitch belonging to Paula Baldwin from Doncaster. This bitch was Paula's 21st birthday present, apparently, and she won her first challenge certificate at Crufts. Well, that is quite something, and they don't come much nicer than this smart little lady. Only two-year-old. The expression's a mixture of the aristocrat and the inscrutable. It's got a well-arched neck, well-laid shoulders on those relatively finely boned legs, a bitch who, for me, every line looks clean, including that super high-set tail. It's a feature of the breed, and she shows practically every one of them. They have great arrogance, too, these dogs. Look at me. <laughs> Champion Norsis Finula is a two-year-old dog from Scotland where he lives with his owner breeder, Eleanor Bothwell. He has four challenge certificates now and is apparently a very laid-back chap who loves his biscuits. Well, I'm not surprised to hear you say that. He's a well-shaped dog, typical beagle. We always see a cracker as best of breed here. Sired by a dial-in dog and so shaped in the same sturdy, compact mould, Beagles really are everybody's ideal as a country companion as well as a household member, mainly because of their very predictable temperament, except they never come back when you call them. Just going to say, they can be a bit wayward, like most of the hounds. <laughs> now, a no-nonsense workman-like hound, this the elk hound, champion Kestos Quicksilver, Josh, a three-year-old dog owned by Neville Sims, handled by Elaine Sims, and bred by Mrs. Stokes. He won the dog challenge certificate here last year and has gone one better this year with best of breed. And rightly so, it's another breed which honestly hasn't altered in its lines, its coat texture or its colour over certainly the past 70 years, either here or in its native Norway. Friendly eye, but a very stubborn nature, powerfully built, compact of body, apparently tireless. His bark's impressive, but I don't think they use them in the ring as much as they did at one time. Well, they must be fairly powerful dogs. I mean, an elk is a sizeable thing to tackle. It's the same thing as a moose when you go to America. By heaven, they are big blighters. Yeah, you don't want to mess with that. <laughs> a dog that likes to let you know she's around, this one. The Finnish Spitz, bitch Tovery Tarassi. Rassi for short, owned by Linda, Stuart and Ian Byrne and bred, of course, by Angela and David Cavill. This little bitch won her title at Crufts, so she was crowned. Yes, well, it's yet another crowning for the Cavill Kennel. They've supplied the best of breed here on a host of occasions in the past. And no wonder, because they're the true type, which the Finns themselves expect to be able to hunt out Capacali and shout the good news to their owners. And they certainly do shout when you see them on the show benches. They're very talkative hounds. They shout at home, they shout anywhere there is a finished <laughs> spit. I love them, but how anybody can cope with them at home, by heaven, thank goodness I've got caissons. Lovely, neatly turned out little dog, alert to everything in the ring. Now, I think that this is the most exotic, elegant and graceful looking hound. Champion Paran Ziggy, a three-year-old Ibizan hound bitch, owned and bred by Bernadette Stoneham. She looks so aloof and really distinguished show dog, who is apparently a chicken and chocolate hound at home. Good heavens. Well, we used to have these things and we didn't feed them chicken or chocolate. It's a very strikingly marked bitch. Very typical model of a rarely seen breed these days. They don't often carry a deal of spare flesh, and in spite of being blessed with a very upright shoulder, they're all too capable of a standing jump over a chain-link fence twice its own height. As I know to my cost, we've had them chasing <coughs> sheep all over the countryside. She looks the part, though, doesn't she, today? Indeed. Well, I'm going to interrupt now because I can't let Jessica talk about this lady. This is Anu. She's Dera Esprit d'Amour, and she belongs to Jessica. She's a Grand Basset Griffin Vendion, three and a half years old, 
and she was the top Grand Basset in 1996, took time out in 1997 to produce a litter of 10 puppies. One of her puppies, Tartuffe, was shown here at Crufts as well at the same time, also by her handler today, Mike Gadsby, and Mike described Tartuffe as a bit of a hooligan, but I don't know about Anu. <laughs> Tartuffe's the hooligan. <laughs> All joking aside, though, this is a real character, a truly delightful canine. It's fascinating for me to watch the way in which a talented handler, such as the great Gadsby, can get the best out of her as they both stretch athletically round this vast crust main ring. It's a breed to watch if they're all going to be as charming as this. And Jess was very proud of Anu. Oh, you could say that. Now, the winner of the Hound Group, though, for 1998, Xenothorn Andrews chose the Afghan hound, Sir Clowey standing ovation, a four-year-old bitch owned by Diana Greenfield and bred by June Davies. She was made up at Crufts. Into the second spot in the group, the Borzoi, champion Starborough Gorse of Red Banner. Gus, bred by Lorraine Marchant and owned and handled by Julie Stephen-Smith, looking in super form for Crufts this year. Into Group 3, champion Tecklegarth, Ptolemy, the Otterhound, owned and bred by Maria Larego. And Group 4 in the Hound Group, I'm no April Fool, I'm at Tadandi, Vincent, Diane Cook and Martin and Helen Lee's two-year-old Hamilton Stavara. But the group winner for 1998, well, that was the Afghan, Ebony. And that's all for today, but we will be back tomorrow with more from the Toys, Utility and Gundog groups. We'll also show you the bitches' obedience, the final rounds of the agility and, of course, the flyball final. But until then, from both of us, bye-bye.